FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. It's Carrie Lutz, and you know we talk about threats that you face in your day-to-day life, potential threats. One of them that uh, I've been faced with from time to time, you probably have, so many of you out there get hit with millions every year, is identity theft. And There's companies that advertise nonstop. The credit bureaus are advertising nonstop. But there are real problems with the services that they offer and what they can do with you to protect you from the predators that are out there looking for the opportunity to misappropriate your identity and then go on spending binges. And it happened to me actually last year. Somebody grabbed my Best Buy account and Actually, they charged, they grabbed my American Express card. They charged something at Best Buy on it. Usually Amex picks these things up. They didn't. And I was trying to make a legitimate charge on my card. It wouldn't go through. And then I went and I looked at my Amex and I said, oh my goodness, this Best Buy charge, not mine. And how Amex let that get by, I don't know. But just one example Credit cards constantly getting breached. They're putting chips in them now to try to control the situation. It's out of hand. And that's why if you don't have a monitoring service, you need to have a monitoring service. Of course, if your credit's in the pits, if you have a 540 FICO score, don't worry about it. Nobody wants to steal your credit anyway. But there's so many different types of identity theft. Uh, I don't even can't even... To begin to tell you that medical ID theft, IRS ID theft, uh, where they file false tax returns to get your refund, social security ID theft, unemployment, compensation ID theft, all different types. But a personal friend of mine is here now. Uh, his name is Patrick Crow, and he's COO of a company that's got a unique perspective. Uh, He's former military and his partners are. So they go about this from a military perspective. Uh, He's an expert in ID theft. The name of the organization is keepmyid.org. Patrick, thanks so much for coming on the show, for visiting me in the studio and breaking up my lonely day. Hey, thanks a lot, Kerry. I'm glad to be here today. And uh, it was a nice drive down from Stuart. Thanks. So, ID theft. Uh, I wasn't exaggerating the extent of the problem, was I? No, Kerry, my, uh, all of our business partners were uh, federal law enforcement officers, either prosecutors or federal agents or some type of state or local agent. And the FBI and the Postal Service, other uh, federal agencies, continue to classify ID theft as the fastest growing crime in the United States. Uh, in 2011, there are 11.6 million victims. And in 2013, it was up to 13.1 uh, million victims. Your chances of having some type of identity fraud or identity theft incident occur is about one in three every year. Yeah. So the odds are, you know, you live five more years, you're going to be an ID theft victim, right? Yeah, at some level, either credit card fraud, like the incidents as you described, or some of the more uh, horrific, serious, full-blown ID theft cases that we see. Right. So you got into this business. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. When you were in the service, uh, you were you were basically doing similar. You had to verify yeah, people yes, were who yes. they said. I was an intelligence uh, officer in the United States Army, spent a lot of time working in special operations and and uh, personal personally identifying people, making sure uh, we knew who people were and where they were and what they were doing. And so I spent a lot of time unraveling uh, bad guys' identities and also helping to try to protect uh, the identities of the good guys. And my partners, um, Brandon 
Uh, McCarthy is the chairman of the ID theft task force for the attorney general in the state of Texas. And uh, Rick Jackson and Brandon and uh, some of our other partners, they got involved. They spent a lot of time uh, prosecuting identity theft cases, and they became very familiar with uh, the different types of identity theft. And they saw that what was going on was not a lot of support from the companies that folks hired to protect their identities. And because the big the big thing is, you know, no one can be 100 percent protected. But what you want to know is that if something happens to you, you're going to have some serious uh, expertise to help you in the event that you are compromised. Right. So the credit bureaus, you've got Experian, Equifax, TransUnion. They just want to sell products uh, because they don't really care. In fact, they like ID theft because for them, it's a tremendous market opportunity, right? It's billions of dollars. Uh, it's a billion, multi-billion dollar market. Yeah. What they're, what they're doing with their, their products are, is credit monitoring, simple, just simple credit monitoring. And the problem with that is that asks the question, was this you? You might have some alert that say, was this you? And uh, that doesn't help you. What we actually do is, on your behalf, uh, using an attorney-client privilege, is we place a fraud alert on your accounts at the credit bureaus. And that's uh, something that the credit bureaus fight tooth and nail. And uh, my partner represented the credit bureaus in their lawsuit against LifeLock, where LifeLock was enjoined from placing fraud alerts. The reason why the fraud alert is so good is because it asks the question, is this you? If I went in to buy a car uh, today and I was going to take out a loan, that finance person in the car dealership should ask me some additional questions to make sure that I'm actually who I said I was. And that's that's the response that the fraud alert triggers. So these fraud alerts uh, really are a mandatory first step for identity theft protection, but they're just a first step, right? Yeah, that's right. There are other other um, steps that folks can take besides uh, fraud alert. Credit monitoring, credit monitoring is 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 a, a good idea to alert you if someone got into your account. Although fraud alert should stop all of that. The other uh, key thing is reducing your your um, the exposure of your address, your junk mail, and your uh, telephone numbers. And we'll we enroll people in in. Um, junk mail reduction, and telemarketer reduction programs. And the the biggest thing is having someone in your court that's going to be up on these things and alert you to things that you can do on your own. And a couple of things that we're uh, recommending for people, two concrete things that someone could spend a couple minutes a day today doing would be one thing is if you have not registered with the Social Security Administration online on their internet portal, uh, go to ssa.gov and set up your own account. That'll keep someone from stealing your Social Security benefits. And then you could also go to the IRS and uh, download their identity theft affidavit. And there's a block in there that says uh, block two, which says that you had your you lost your wallet. And I'm sure, you know, I hate to admit it that, uh, you know, I've lost my wallet probably two or three times in my life. But if it's ever happened to you, go ahead and check that block and that'll generate a uh, response from the IRS to guard you. So there's a lot of things we can do on our own. Uh, and shredding is my one of my favorite ones as well, shredding all your information. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny thing. Uh, if you watch that uh, show, uh, Better Call Saul, which is the prequel to Breaking Bad, uh, there's a an assisted living uh, nursing home that's ripping off all of the uh, – all of the clients slash patients and he goes there and they're shredding up all the documents and he goes to the dumpster, grabs all of the documents and then uh, starts reassembling them because it wasn't a cross cut shredder. It was just a, uh, basically a shredder that just sliced it across one way and didn't, slice it the other way. Yeah, what, so. what yeah, why that's important is because that those are the answers to security questions on your online accounts, you know, what's your address, what's your mother's maiden name, all those types of questions. Uh, that's why destroying all the paper copies are and it has account numbers on there. So right. I, and and if I had enough if I had enough paper on someone, I could probably um, open an account in their name using the data that I get out of their out of their dumpster. Yeah, well, one thing I always do is any uh, online 
service that asks for my date of birth, I never give them the right. accurate date of birth because you got to know that right. in order That's to commit right. identity theft. And the one thing that always bothers me going into a doctor's office is they get your social security mm-hmm. number and they get your date of birth. Right. So they got you there. Right. There's no way to to really avoid ID theft once you start dealing with the medical industrial complex. I would say that, uh, you know, any physician's offices, uh, don't give them your social. Uh, they're going to, yeah. they might, they might get a little uptight about that, but just tell them you're not, you're not going to do it. Um, they do have additional, a lot of additional requirements on, on them to, to help protect the information. And uh, there are uh, one thing uh, tip is that if someone, if you are a victim and uh, of benefit theft, someone gets a hold of your health insurance and gets treated in your name, don't uh, don't pay the bill. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're gonna. Sure. It's not like the banks where they're gonna try to. The banks, if you have an incident, for the most part, they cover any loss immediately, and and then mm-hmm. you just move on. But the health insurance companies are are behind a little bit in that. They're going to start sending you the bills and the dunning letters, and and uh, that's where it helps to have a team on your side that'll uh, respond quickly to them and say, "Hey, look, the fact that you treated someone who stole my identity is your problem. You know, yeah. Don't don't make it my problem." Certain, certainly the case, and yeah, this is the fastest growing crime in the country. Nobody's exempt from it. I think even the president. Oh, yeah, we have politicians. Some, yeah, that's right. We have uh, one of our favorite things is if you don't think it's going to happen to you, it's it's happened to the former chief justice of the Supreme Court, uh, the vice president, Beyonce and Mark Cuban. And uh, General Shally Casavilli was a former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So no one is really exempt. Uh, our program does the best that we can to prevent it from happening. But if it does happen, you can rest assured knowing that you have over 250 years of federal law enforcement and intelligence experience backing up, backing you up in case you need the help. And when we return, uh, we'll talk about registering and costs and things like that. And we got a special offer, a discount code for you so you can save on the service on the Financial Survival Network. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Worried about the coming dollar collapse? Then you need to speak to Tom Cloud today about buying gold and silver. It's the key to protecting your wealth from a declining dollar. Call him now at 800-247-2812. Tom will help you find the exact right bullion products to keep you safe. Would you believe that Tom's been in the business for 38 years? Tom understands these markets better than just about anybody. He's seen bull markets and he's seen bear markets and he's not worried and you shouldn't be either. When it comes to uncertain times like these, there's only one place to turn and that's gold and silver. And Tom's offering all FSN listeners free shipping and insurance. So call Tom now at 800-247-2812. That's 800-247-2812 or visit cloudhardassets.com and tell him Kerry sent you. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. And if you just joined us, if you're just tuning in, uh, Kerry Lutz, it's Financial Survival Network. We're talking with Patrick Crow. He is CE, COO of uh, keepmyid.org, and uh, he's a veteran both of the uh, both of the armed forces and of uh, keeping people's identities safe and protecting you from, from those predators out there who would steal your identity. And Patrick, so to get started using your service and uh, I've signed up and I just had to uh, basically hit the validation email, but it's basically like signing up for any other website, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. You can just go to uh, you know, keepmyid.org on, uh, and uh, hit in there, enroll, hit the enroll now button, and it'll ask you a series of questions. Uh, we are going to ask those questions, your social and your date of birth that we talked about earlier. Uh, it's a 256-bit encrypted uh, system, and once that information 
gets in there, it's properly safeguarded. We need that information because we're going to place the fraud alert on your accounts at the credit bureaus. And they're going to require us, uh, us to provide that information to them. And you get down to the um, coupon code area. There's going to be a question on the payment page that's going to ask you uh, if you have a code and you want to put in uh, FSN2 for uh, Financial Survivor Network 2. And that'll get you a 25% discount on the service. Excellent. We always like to pass that along. And I think it's really essential that you have this because aside from everything else, there are services that uh, you can go to. They don't even really screen you. But I know from my days of consulting for mortgage banks, you go to a marketing service and they'll give you the names for a fee of people who have high credit scores. So you say, I want people with uh, FICOs of 780 and over that live in Palm Beach County, Florida, and boom, you got like 15,000 names right there. And then you begin your research to find out the other info that you need on them. And in no time at all, you can have uh, 15,000 potential victims. Boom, you own them. And it's kind of frightening when you think how easy it all really is. But hey, you don't have to be a master criminal to commit identity theft, do you, Patrick? No, actually, um, a lot of it comes out of the the um, organized crime rackets. Uh, but you don't even need to do that, especially down here in South Florida. We see I see cases every day um, where the hottest thing these days is the is the tax refund theft. So what that is is they just get your name and social and they file a ten forty in your name. And uh, they dummy up the paperwork in order to get a refund. And a lot of times you will not find out about that until uh, you go to file your, your own taxes. And any, any cost you incurred in that, we would uh, reimburse you for because, you know, there's really three things that set us apart from other companies. One is our uh, proactive fraud alert that other companies are enjoined from doing now due to the federal court decision in California. So we're... The only folks left that can do that because we use an attorney to place those fraud alerts. We cover all ID theft events. Uh, So if anything happens to you with medical, uh, tax fraud, benefit fraud, criminal ID theft, employment fraud, or Social Security fraud, we're going to cover you and we're going to react. So we'll cover you for any monetary damages, lost wages, those types of things. Most companies only cover financial ID theft. And the other thing we're going to do for you is we're going to do all the work for you, depending on the severity of your case. If you have a severe case, you're going to have retired federal agents uh, working your case for you. A lot of companies are just going to send you a book on how to fix it yourself, uh, or they're going to have a time limit, like we're going to help you for one year. But uh, my partners knew that that was the big problem they were trying to solve, was give somebody peace of mind that they were going to have the... uh, the Texas Rangers uh, on their side trying to fix their problem if they encounter one. Right. And I guess uh, when the inevitable occurs, what's the process? So your ID gets stolen, you find out about it, then what happens next? Okay. Yeah. They can either uh, call call in on our 800 number and uh, they'll do triage on you initially. They'll say, well, what happened? And uh, they will email that to uh, – Myself, I'll get a copy of it, and we'll have one of our experts, one of our retired um, federal agents or a retired detective, will call you and, if need be, get a power of attorney from you to deal with the agencies that were impacted by your theft. And we'll keep working it until it's solved. I mean, we've dealt with uh, some of the most horrific cases are are when you get pulled over for a traffic stop oh my goodness. and uh, you get arrested because – someone's committed a crime using your identity and that's happened to uh two or three of our of our uh of our clients and that that's one that uh, you really want some experience on your side when that happens wow i can't even imagine that here you are you're driving down the street minding your own business you get picked up by a license plate scanner or something like that they're all over the place scanning millions of license plates per day per week tens of millions per month, 
and yours pops up in the wanted column. The next thing you know, you're being pulled over, cuffed for a crime you never even committed. And I've heard of these things happening. And um, it's kind of like uh, the trial with Kafka. It's uh, what did I do? <laughs> Who did this? And uh, the next thing you know, especially if you have a common name like uh, Luis Garcia or mm-hmm. Jose Gonzalez mm-hmm. or John right. Smith, I mean, you're really screwed. Yep. And next thing you're trying to prove that, you know, you don't know who this person is. Sometimes, usually it's a fairly easy thing to do, but, you know, after you might have spent a night in jail, not real pleasant. And my goodness, uh, you really do need somebody at your side besides an attorney, somebody who really has had experience dealing with this kind of thing. That's right, Kerry. And our, our uh, partners have had experience as defense attorneys and prosecutors. And uh, the good thing is, is that when a retired Secret Service agent calls the jail that's holding you or the, or the, the agency that made the arrest, and a lot of times they can explain it to them right then and, and avoid a lot of costly legal fees. But if you do end up incurring a lot of attorney's fees, then your your uh, coverage, the million dollars in coverage would kick in and help cover uh, would cover any uh, costs associated with hiring an attorney to get you out of that situation. It's just just a nightmare. And it happens more than you'd ever believe it, it possible because – there's so many people, there's so many people wanted by the law, and there's so many people using fake identities. I remember a guy getting, uh, that I knew as a client, getting into all sorts of trouble because his brother used his identity, used his license, and it happened like 10 or 12 years ago. And all of a sudden, New York State suspended his license. And it's like, geez, how do I explain this one? And it was just a mess. He finally managed to clear it up brother was a real ne'er-do-well. So obviously, uh, Patrick, this business is evolving and you're going to be adding more services as as time goes by, right? That's right. And we're actually in, we're in uh, discussions right now. We're uh, building a partnership with another company called uh, Safe Shepherd. And what Safe Shepherd does is they're like a shredder for the internet, uh, if that makes sense to you. They go out and... Um, find your personal information on the internet. And a lot of it's in these uh, data broker databases, Intellius, Axiom, and they have all this information and the credit bureaus actually get information from them and they will opt you out of those databases. Uh, For example, I found that I had, uh, you know, all the particulars about a mortgage I had uh, up in Maryland where, where it was on there. And that's the kind of information that a, a uh, thief could use to create your identity to answer the security questions. Uh, some of you may have experienced the um, the ID theft, the ID uh, verification questions that's sold by the credit bureaus. It's they're doing it online. Level three, level yeah. Three yeah, yeah, they're doing it online now. Uh, I experienced the other day with a service I was signing up for. You know, I just did business with this company. Uh, you were associated with this phone number. Uh, and that's where uh, Safe Shepherd comes in, and uh, and uh, we're going to have a offer uh, for all our customers to get their their services at a reduced rate. Yeah. Well, I highly recommend this service. Like I say, uh, in this day and age, it's something that you really need. Uh, I just see the three major bureaus. Uh, for them, they don't really care about identity theft, in my opinion. To them, it's just a cash cow. They're actually profiting by the uh, flaws in the system that they created. And that, to me, is heinous. And I wouldn't give them any of my money if I could at all possibly avoid it because it's just wrong what they're doing. Try to get try to get Experian on the phone one day if you really yeah. want to have some fun. You'll never be able to do it. So anyway, Patrick, I guess we go to uh, keepmyid.org. When you're getting ready to do the payment, it's FSN2 is your discount code. And, uh, hey, you'll be able to sleep a little bit easier. It's not a lot of money to sign up for this. And it's something that I think really can protect you and keep you safe from these digital online predators because they are out there. It's just huge. And just think of all the people out there who've been hit by it celebrities. I thought Obama got hit by it, but 
as you see, I think it was heard, Michelle. Michelle got hit, and uh, and Vice President Biden, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and other members of the cabinet got hit as well. So don't let it happen to you. Go over there, and hey, while you're at it, go over to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Check out the site. We've got news coming from so many sources now. I don't know how our beleaguered webmaster, Stefan, even keeps up with it, but he does. And it's amazing. Hundreds of articles a week that you would have to spend hours going to the websites to find. While you're there, opt into our mailing list because we've got a couple of great webinars coming up. Mike Gazzola is going to be putting one on the week after next. So be there and we will we'll be back on the Financial Survival Network. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. 